So I want to give you a five step plan to maximize your mental health in any relationship. Although these are not in any type of order, I still think that the way that I'm presenting this to you will be more beneficial if you do it kind of in this type of order. So step one, check in with yourself. You have to determine seriously if you're emotionally ready to be in any relationship. And if you are not emotionally ready, you have to determine what is the reason why you may need a little bit more time to get yourself in the right place to be able to be in a relationship and be your authentic, healthy self in that relationship. So that would be a good time for you to determine whether there is some unresolved trauma, whether there's some resentment still there, if you have any difficulty in trusting, and if you are ready to be able to show up the right way in any relationship. Step two is for you to identify your own values and principles. Now, I didn't really consider what my values were when I was going into a relationship. So if I don't know what my values are, I won't really know what to look for or what to stand on or what principles to live by if I haven't even identified them for myself prior to getting into a relationship. So for me, I, ident I really truly value family. I truly value trust and I truly value honesty and integrity. I value compassion and kindness. I value giving. I value empathy. I value these type of things because they are important in order for me to be able to give that to others. I need to also be able to recognize if it's being given to me. So I need to first be able to identify what my values are. And me, for instance, I live off of the principles that God has for us, that God has ordained for us. Now there's 10 commandments in the Bible and things like that. If you're a spiritual person, I'm a spiritual person. I'm not a religious person, but I do go by the principles that God put out for us. And for one, that is me making sure that I first love God and that I also love others. Not only that, do I stand on the principles of giving people grace and mercy? Because you cannot really show up for anybody if you struggle with giving grace when somebody is really not deserving of it or you feel like they don't deserve it. And mercy when they make a mistake. And me being able to give mercy means that even though they made the mistake, I can forgive them for whatever it is that they've done and allow ourselves to allow us both to continue in a relationship because I am, I value forgiveness and I value, um, being able to let people, you know, make mistakes and be able to own up to their own mistakes and be able to do something to, um, change their ways in order to continue with the relationship in a healthy manner. So, know your values and know your principles before you go into any relationship and then check in with each other to know whether or not you have some of the same values and principles, because that's going to be important in any relationship. Step three, if you're not currently in a relationship or maybe you just got out of a relationship and it ended not that well, right? Enjoy the time in between relationships. Enjoy your singleness. Allow yourself to date yourself. Figure out what you like. Figure out what you enjoy. Figure out whether there are things that you really want to be able to do before you get into a relationship. Because a lot of times we go into a relationship and we really haven't had an opportunity to do some of the things that we really love and enjoy doing. Me, I love to travel. I love to get around. And sometimes when you get into a relationship, it makes it a little bit more difficult to be able to kind of come and go as you normally would because you got to consider somebody else. So do some of the things that you really want to do maybe before you get into a relationship, because sometimes we put so much of ourselves in a relationship that we tend to lose 
who we are, what we enjoyed and the things that we, and the goals that we had for ourselves. So enjoy your singleness and enjoy yourself in a company of yourself so you know what you want and what you would want to continue with when you get into a committed relationship with someone else. Number five, reintegrate the pieces of yourself that you may have set aside because somebody didn't really like that part of you. And what I mean by that is if you're in a relationship with somebody and then you were someone who actually set boundaries and enforced boundaries before, but when you tried to do that in one of the relationships that you had before, somebody made you feel bad about setting your boundaries and saying no, or saying what you didn't like, or, you know, standing up for yourself and being assertive. And so because of that, you were so concerned that they would not want to stay in a relationship with you because they had such a reaction to you setting your boundaries, saying no, making choices that, you know, were better for you. And then because of that, you no longer um, show that part of you in relationships. So that's a piece of you that you set to the side. Well, before you get into another relationship in your singleness, reintegrate that piece of you back into your life. And the other pieces that you may have set aside and let go of because somebody reacted to it in a way that was, you know, maybe scared you and made you feel like you would lose the relationship. For instance, if you were somebody that loved wearing your hair out and, or maybe you liked wearing your hair one way. And then somebody said, I don't like your hair like that. So you stop being yourself and stop wearing your hair the way that you enjoy because somebody didn't like that. Well, that might be a part of you that you need to reintegrate back into your life and your singleness and never allow that piece of you to be set aside because of somebody else. Because here's the reality. If you love yourself and you love you the way that you are, then it is somebody else's responsibility to accept you as you are. I remember having the times where people didn't like it when my hair was short. So therefore I would grow my hair back out because they didn't like it. Well, then when I became single, I said, you know what? That's what I like. And I don't care who likes it or who doesn't like it. If it's something that I like, it's something that I prefer. I'm going to reintegrate that part of me back into my life. And when I connect with somebody else, either they accept me for who I am or they can get the step in. Step five, be the person that you're looking for is looking for. And what I mean by that is I have this idea of the type of person that I would want in a relationship. But the thing is, I must be that same type of person. If I enjoy and I love a person that is funny and honest and kind and compassionate, then I too need to be funny and, you know, kind, compassionate and honest. If I value, um, making space for somebody and allowing somebody to be vulnerable and accept their humanity and understand that they will make mistakes and be forgiving. I too need to be somebody that's forgiving and give people the space to, you know, be vulnerable with me. I can't expect that of others if I'm not that myself. So if you have areas in your life and parts of your character that might need some work, then take the time to get that work done. Maybe it might be where you need support of a mental health professional or somebody that you consider to be a wise person that is not judgmental and sharing that and saying, Hey, is there any parts of me or do you notice anything about me that I might want to consider working on? So I don't let that show up in my relationships and cause problems in my relationships. It's okay to, you know, ask people, you know, that, but not people that, you know, really don't have it together themselves. I usually like to go to somebody that will really help and, you know, identify and recognize some common themes that they may have noticed. And they will give me some advice and some information, you know, that will be helpful for me without any judgment or without making it, making me feel bad about the way that I am. 
So reach out to somebody that can help you, you know, a good friend, a good wise person or a mental health professional that will be, you know, able to help you to become the best version of yourselves when you start deciding to get into a new relationship, because there's nothing worse than going from one relationship to the other and you have not done the work on yourself. Get to know you and the best person that you are, the best version of yourself before you get into anything else. Because if you go into a relationship with all these missing pieces of yourself, then you will not have the capacity to be able to receive them in the way that they are and accept them for who they are in a relationship. All right. So hopefully you found that useful. I hope that you will decide to subscribe, you know, put the notifications on as well as like this video and share it with others. If you found it useful until the next time, good mental health, good physical health, and as always good spiritual health. Y'all take great care. Thank you.